Hi guys, in this video I'm going to continue with reviewing and I'm going to review hypothesis testing at a very high level, meaning at a very general macro level. We're going to do tons of hypothesis tests in this course of varying types and I want to refresh your recollection on the basics of hypothesis testing. So let's define some terms here. So a hypothesis and let me not write all these out but simply verbalize them. You can rewind and re-listen to this stuff. Um, so a hypothesis, one way to define it is a claim or statement about the value of a single population characteristic, something like mu that we discussed last class, or the values of several population characteristics. Okay, so what's a statement about a population characteristic? Well, mu is the one we reviewed last class. That's a population parameter or characteristic. And a statement on mu could be, uh, if we're talking about GPA, uh, we could say mu equals uh, 3.52. That is a statement about a population characteristic. Okay? So there's an example of a statement. And for some reason I'm making the claim that mu equals 3.52. Now what's my population? Maybe I'm talking, let's be very specific, I'm talking about this school, this college that we go to. Uh, the, the average GPA of students in this school is 3.52. That's a statement. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just showing you what a statement about a population characteristic might look like. But it can also be uh, several population characteristics simultaneously. So we'll see this soon enough. We could say mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. That's uh, the 1, 2, 3 are subscripts here. So get used to subscripting because it's a great way to kind of, uh, it's a great language tool to notate different groups. So mu1 means the population mean from group or population 1. Mu2 means the population mean from, populate, uh, from group 2. And mu3 means the population uh, mean of group 3. And what we're, the statement we're making here is that they all, all three of these pop groups or populations have the same mean. Okay? So that's hypothesis in a nutshell. Next let's define a little more specifically a null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is a specific, is a, is a little more specific than a hypothesis. First off the notation is important H O, so we all know what we're talking about. H subscript O indicates a null hypothesis. And this is a claim about a population characteristic again, except this is the claim that we initially assume to be true. So when we conduct a hypothesis test, we have to start somewhere. And in other words, we have to start somewhere with respect to the population characteristic. So where do we start? Well, HO is going to define that. Okay, so typically we'll write HO and with colon we'll say, let's for example, mu equals 3.52. So what we're saying is we're going to initially assume that the mean GPA in this college is 3.52. That's what this is saying. Okay? And this will, you'll see as we get further in this review, this will serve as our starting position to conduct the hypothesis test. Okay? Now, the other important piece of a hypothesis test is the alternative hypothesis. And this kind of, this pair of null and alternative is what sets up a hypothesis test. So, the notation we're going to use is H subscript 1. Okay. 
So what's an alternative hypothesis? It's simply the competing claim to the null hypothesis. Okay? So HO, when I say HO, we know null, I mean null hypothesis, and H1, alternative hypothesis. So HO will be either rejected or we will fail to reject it. And some of you may have learned accepted, okay, based on the evidence that we collect from our sample. Okay, so let's let me just back off that and complete this statement. So if the alternative hypothesis is a competing claim, I can complete my hypothesis st statement by making a competing claim on HO. So a possible competing claim is that mu is not equal to 3.52. So I almost have a complete hypothesis uh, test statement. What I need to add to this is the level of significance of my test. And so let's define this level of significance symbol for this is alpha Greek letter alpha so let me this was h1 okay alpha and what alpha is is the level of significance of the test it's kind of the burden of proof that I need before I can reject HO so let Typically, a statement looks like this, and a typical value for alpha is 0.05. But this is given to us, so let me close this out. This is our example of uh, a hypothesis test, and you should have seen many hypothesis tests already. Okay, so alpha is the level of significance. This is given by question or chosen by researchers. So if you're in a class, alpha will be given to you in a problem, but if you're actually conducting a hypothesis test, you have to choose what alpha is. And a typical level of alpha is 1% or 0 0.01, 5%, 0.05, 10%, okay, and so forth. But it can be any value between 0 and 1 or 0% and 100%. So you choose alpha and now we have a complete hypothesis statement. We have a null hypothesis, an alternative hypothesis, and a level of significance clearly defined and we can go about actually conducting <coughs> this hypothesis test. Now to actually conduct a hypothesis test we will collect sample data okay so, so hypothesis statement That's what we've done so far. Two, collect sample data. And we've talked about collecting, why we collect sample data already. Hopefully we collect a random sample of data. Okay. Three, uh, these are general steps. Uh, make decision on hypothesis test. And the decisions boil down to reject HO so these are your choices you either reject the null hypothesis in other words you put a strike through and you reject the null hypothesis statement and you're showing strong evidence for the alternative hypothesis in that case okay that's one possibility the other possibility is that you fail to reject HO and some of you may have learned uh, to uh, accept HO, but fail to reject is actually more technically correct. Failing to reject HO means I don't have enough evidence, or in other words, the sample data I collected don't give me enough evidence for me to go ahead and throw away the null hypothesis. I can't just say it's not true. Okay, there's not enough evidence. Uh, or you can think of the burden of of proof was not met for me to kind of comfortably reject the null hypothesis. 
So these are the two possible outcomes of a hypothesis test. Okay. HO will be rejected in favor of H1 only if sample evidence strongly suggests that HO is false. If the sample does not provide such evidence, HO is not rejected. So play these, uh, these things I'm reading out loud back for yourself until it clicks, okay? Okay, so here we have the important terminology for hypothesis testing. Here we've put together an example of a complete hypothesis statement which includes a null hypothesis, an alternative hypothesis, and a level of significance, okay? Then we would go about actually collecting sample data and making a bunch of calculations depending on the specific type of hypothesis test we're doing, which that will be the details of, uh, that we'll learn throughout this course. And then finally, at the end of this process, we're going to come to a decision. And the decision is either going to be to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? And let me give you one more item, and that is how do we come to that conclusion with alpha? So let me delete a bunch of these items and discuss the notion of a p-value with you to close this review on hypothesis testing out. Okay. Okay, so this notion of a p-value is very important. Okay, so the p-value a p-value is a probability value, okay? And specifically what it means is it is the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the test statistic that we calculated from our sample data given that HO is true. Okay? One, one more time. It is the probability of getting a test statistic, so let's also define that in a second, as extreme or more extreme than the test statistic that we calculated from our sample data given that the null hypothesis is true. Okay? Now, if the p-value, so let me say if p-value is less than alpha, we will reject HO. So remember, that was one of the decisions that we could make. Okay? If the p-value is greater than alpha, so alpha, remember, is diff given to you in a question, okay? If the p-value is greater than alpha, then we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we either reject HO in this case or fail to reject HO in that case. So the decision is the same that we discussed before. P-value compared to alpha will allow us to make that decision, will give us the kind of definitive rule to make that decision. Okay? So what's a let me let me also I mentioned test statistic and I probably should have first discussed test statistic but let me close this out by just talking about what a test statistic is uh, every type of hypothesis test that we'll do this semester and there'll be varying types um, will have a test statistic so this is a value computed from sample data so this you can think of this as that ste step where we collect data and we calculate something from it, from sample data. And used to reach conclusion on whether whether to reject HO or fail to reject HO.
Okay, so it's simply a value that's calculated from the sample data that you collect. Okay, so it, it so, just so happens that if this test statistic is very inconsistent with what HO is saying, or in other words, it's extremely different than what HO is saying, then probably we should end up rejecting HO. And those cases will end up with a low p-value. Okay, so uh, hopefully this kind of refreshes some of your um, experience with hypothesis testing. You've definitely seen this before if you've taken the prereq courses for this course. Um, so what I want you to walk away from this review with is the basic concepts of a null hypothesis, an alternative hypothesis, a level of significance or alpha level, a test statistic, and a p-value, and basically the decision or the final conclusions of a hypothesis test, i.e. whether we reject the null or we fail to reject the null. Okay, so hopefully this will have served as somewhat of a refresher. Keep watching these reviews. I'll, I'll do more as I uh, think of important topics that will uh, kind of make the transition into this course smoother for you.